Welcome, curious minds, back to the Deep Dive. Great to be here. As always, we've got a stack of fascinating sources, and our mission today is simple. Pull out the most important, maybe the most surprising insights for you. In today's topic, uh, it definitely falls into the surprising category. Absolutely. We're plunging into something you probably wouldn't expect. <laughs> the meeting point between psychedelics and, well, anti-aging. Yeah, sounds it sci-fi, doesn't it? It really does. But we've been digging into this new study, and it's genuinely shaking things up. It reveals something pretty remarkable about a compound most people connect with mental health or you know, different states of consciousness. That's right. And the headline, this is something straight from Emory Health Sciences, it's a real eye-opener. Get us with it. Okay, so a recent study found that psilocin, which you know is the active bit after your body processes psilocybin for mushrooms, it seems to actively slow down aging. In what way? Like in people? Well, in cells and in organisms, based on this research, and this is happening just as the whole anti-aging market is, well, exploding, it's past $500 million now. Wow. So there's clearly a massive appetite for anything that might help us live longer, healthier lives. You can really feel that desire. And, okay, these initial findings that were published in NPJ Aging, and they are just wild. Tell me about it. Okay, get this. In the lab, human skin cells, lung cells too, mm -hmm. when treated with this compound, their lifespan extended by over 50%. 50% just for the cells. Just for the cells. Think about that. But then, and this is always the exciting part, right? They moved to living organisms. The mouse study. Exactly. Yeah. Mice treated with psilocybin didn't just live longer, an amazing 30% longer. Which is significant in itself. Totally significant. But here's where it gets really interesting for me they also visibly looked better. They aged better. Okay, that's the hook. Not just more years, but better years. Precisely. It's just the whole conversation from just lifespan to, you know, health span, quality of life. Yeah. So let's get into the specifics of that mice study a bit more. This was uh, the first long-term study like this, in vivo meaning in the actual living animal on aged mice. How old were they? They used 19-month-old mice, which for context is kind of like a human hitting 60, maybe 65 years old, so already senior. Right, so not starting super young. No, which is important. And the dosing. Yeah. They started with a low dose, 5 milligrams, then gave a higher monthly dose, 15 milligrams, for 10 months straight. Okay. And the outcome. Like you said, a clear 30% increase in survival compared to the mice that didn't get the treatment. That's pretty compelling preclinical data. So when we say aged better, what does that actually mean? It wasn't just like a feeling the researchers had, right? No, no. They documented specific things. We're talking noticeably better fur quality, uh -huh. fewer white hairs showing up, and maybe the most striking bit, some actual hair regrowth. Hair regrowth in aged mice. Yeah. So it's not just statistics, it's visible, physical signs of, well, less advanced aging. Wow. There's a quote from one of the co-investigators, Ali John Zarabi. Oh, right. He said, these mice weren't just surviving longer, they experienced better aging. And that just hits differently, doesn't it? It really does, because I'm... often the focus is just extending life, even if that life isn't, you know, high quality. Exactly. This hints at something else, adding real life mm -hmm. to those extra years. Function vitality. So how? What's the proposed mechanism? What's actually happening inside? That's the next big question, right? And it seems like psilocybin might be working on several fronts at once, hitting multiple uh, hallmarks of aging. Okay, like what? The study suggests it reduces oxidative stress that's like the cellular wear and tear from free radicals. Like rust on cells, kind of. Exactly. It also seems to boost DNA repair responses. Our DNA gets damaged all the time, so fixing it efficiently is crucial. Makes sense. And the big one, preserving telomere length. Ah, telomeres, the little caps on the ends of our chromosomes. Yep, like the plastic bits on shoelaces. They protect the important genetic info. When they get too short, cells stop dividing properly, and that's a major driver of aging and age-related diseases. Cancer, neurodegeneration, heart disease. All linked to telomere shortening, yeah. yeah. So preserving them is a really big deal for healthy aging. Okay, let's pause here because this really forces us to rethink psilocybin, doesn't it? Absolutely. For so long, it's been all about the brain, the hallucinogenic effects, right? A neuroactive compound. That was the main focus, yeah. But this study is suggesting something much more systemic, affecting the whole body. Exactly. And that connects to something the senior author, Louise Hecker, pointed out. What was that? She noted that most cells in our body actually have serotonin receptors, not just brain cells. Oh, interesting. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So she said, basically, 
This study opens up a whole new frontier. How could psilocybin influence aging processes throughout the body, especially if given later in life? That completely changes the picture, from just brain chemistry to potentially whole body aging. It's a massive shift. And Hacker's point really underlines why this is so exciting. It challenges that old brain only view. Right. Because if these serotonin receptors are everywhere, the potential for systemic effects is much greater than we thought. So it's not just about tripping, it's about fundamental cell processes. Potentially, yes. And she also mentioned, you know, that even starting the treatment late in life in these mice still improves survival. Which is clinically relevant, as she put it. Usually relevant, because it raises this massive question. If we can intervene effectively, even when someone's already, say, in their 60s, what does that mean for our aging population? Especially since populations are aging globally. The implications for promoting healthy longevity, even starting later, could be really significant. It offers hope. In speaking of aging populations, we have to touch on the real world picture, especially here in the U.S., life expectancy. It's not great compared to similar countries. No, it's lagging. There was that KFF report recently. Yeah, the Kaiser Family Foundation. It showed U.S. life expectancy is around 78.4 years. Compared to what, like 82.5? Yes, yeah, exactly. That's a four-year gap. Yeah. And over the last few decades, since 1980, other similar countries added almost eight years to their lifespan. And the U.S. Only 4.7 years. So the gap is widening. We're falling further behind. That context makes research like this even more crucial, doesn't it? We don't just need longer lives. We desperately need healthier lives, yeah. more functional years. Which brings us back to that health span versus lifespan idea. Yeah, precisely. And Dr. Zarabi, the co-investigator we mentioned, he's also a palliative care doctor. Right. And he said something really powerful about that. His quote was, one of my biggest concerns is prolonging life at the cost of dignity and function. Oof. Yeah. That hits home. But this study hints at a different path, right? A path toward longer and healthier life where you maintain function, maintain dignity. Imagine adding years where you're still active, still engaged, not just existing. That's the ultimate goal, isn't it? And Emery, where this research happened, they're not just looking at aging in isolation. No, they're heavily involved in the other big wave of psilocybin research, too. The mental health side. Yeah, they're running phase two and phase three clinical trials right now using psilocybin-assisted therapy for depression. So it's happening side by side, the aging research and the depression trials. Which is a really key connection to make. Dr. Zarabi actually linked them. How so? He basically expressed hope that if psilocybin therapy gets FDA approval for depression, maybe around 2027, which seems plausible. Then having that improved quality of life from treating depression might also translate into a longer, healthier physical life. Ah, so a potential synergy there. Better mental health leading to better physical longevity. Exactly. It suggests mental well-being could have real, measurable, physiological benefits systemically. We're only just starting to maybe understand that connection properly. It really blurs that line between mind and body, doesn't it? Yeah. Treating one might profoundly affect the other. A truly holistic view. And it's worth mentioning, this kind of boundary-pushing research needs support. This work was funded by several groups. Right, the Emory I-3 Award, the Georgia CTSA NIH Award. And a grant from Emory's own Woodruff Health Sciences Center for Health and Aging. So, serious backing for some really innovative science. Definitely needed for this kind of exploratory work. So, wrapping this up, what's the big takeaway for you listening in as we finish this deep dive? Well, for me... It's got to be that science can surprise you, right? Yeah. Breakthroughs don't always come from where you expect. Absolutely. Who'd have thought a psychedelic compound might hold clues to healthier aging? It challenges our assumptions about medicine, about aging itself. And this study, okay, it's preclinical, it's mice. But it provides really strong evidence. It opens up entirely new research paths. Things we wouldn't have even considered a few decades ago. And it forces us to ask, if something like psilocybin, which we're still learning about systemically, can impact aging, what other unconventional things should we be looking at? Where else might we find keys to functional longevity? And think about that interplay again, mental health, the depression trials, potentially linking to physical health and aging. It's all connected, mind and body together on the journey. It's a call to think more holistically, maybe look beyond the obvious solutions. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us on this fascinating deep dive. Always a pleasure. Keep asking questions, stay curious, because as we saw today, Sometimes the biggest insights are hiding in the most unexpected corners of science.